Hi, I'm in the process of building myself a new 3D printer and in this, the second video in this series, I want to go over how I designed and built the extruder for my new CoreXY style printer. As shown in the last video, I now have a working core XY stage. And from this point, a uh, logical next step for me is to focus on the extruder and hotend combination. This will also allow me to check if the extruder and hotend will fit in the current core XY stage frame or if I need to make any adjustments. For example, for the Y axis, it's already quite close and I still want to keep the maximum travel distance, so I may need to make small adjustments to the frame. This is a mock-up for the extruder and hotend combo from my old printer. It used one of these, I would say, entry-level or cheap uh, extruders which have a single drive gear as well as an idler, which is spring-loaded and presses the filament onto the drive gear, which has no reduction in this case. The extruder then feeds directly into the hot end, which is another, I would say, entry-level system here um, with a 24-volt heater core. I also added a parts, not a parts cooling fan, but a cooling fan and a simple shroud for the heat break and cooling section. Both of these systems work and uh, with a bit of settings tuning you get good quality prints out of them, but I think for the new setup I want to try something else while upcycling some of the parts. For the extrusion hot end I originally thought that I would just purchase a ready-made setup and I looked at quite a few options. But in the end I decided to model my own, so I can have more control over the shape and size and make sure that it integrates well within the CoXY stage. And again I will be machining the parts. Not because I think it's the best solution, I believe that most of the components for this 3D printer build should just be 3D printed, but my old printer is in such a sorry state that I just don't want to fix it. This is a mock-up of my plan for the new setup. I purchased a hot end and heater co combination. It's a E3D Revo with a 24 volt heater core so that I can reuse the power supply from my old printer. For the drive geysers, I want to use these two, which will allow me to drive the filament from both sides. I think they're used in a couple of Creality printers, at least that is what the eBay listing said. They already came with the bearings installed and the riot mounting screws and they seem to be readily available. The dry system will have one fixed gear and one spring loaded one. Here I will maybe reuse some of the components from the old exterior as well as a bit of a gear reduction from this um, gear which then gets mounted to the stepper motor. So that's at least the plan and now I have to come up with a design that combines these parts efficiently and also has enough cooling for the sort of cold side of the hot end. As you just saw, the schematics can get quite messy during the design process, especially if I'm not sure which dimension should really depend on each other. I won't go into too much detail, um, but if you want to check out the files, I will put them on the GitHub repository. For now though, I think I have my first working design, at least I hope so, so the next step will be machining the parts to be able to test them. So the extruder or the parts for the extruder that I will machine are these three. It's the backplate, the heatsink and the mounting for the hot end, as well as a, a hook that uh, presses the second filament gear uh, onto the first. 
these are my sort of first trials. I did one um, test piece where I checked the bolt hole alignment um, for the gears as well as the stepper motor and um, was able to make some adjustment based on that. The heatsink is probably the most difficult part that I will be machining so far and the Fusion 360 simulation says that it could take a couple of hours. This is especially since all the little heatsink uh, fins, uh, I will be machining this with this really small or oh, three millimeter end mill and doing that in multiple passes will just take a while. The sort of roughing part I will do with a six mil end mill. This is not the issue, but all the finer details that takes quite some time. So I would say that it worked out rather well and now it's time for the first real assembly. I did a bit of test fitting and had to remachine the hook and change a few dimensions as there wasn't enough space for the hook to to fit within the heatsink and keep enough pressure on the on the filament so I had to change some dimensions but other than that I didn't really have to change large large components or mechanics it's not finished finished uh, things like a feed for the filament I want to include but I don't have the final components here so I don't know the final thread size that I need to tap into the heatsink but these are things that I can change later I did include a bit of play in the form of oversized holes um, in the fit between the first drive gear and the gear on the stepper motor so I can sort of fine tune the teeth engagement as I'm not 100% sure what the exact number is. I also tried my best to drill out the 
uh, drive gear on the stepper motor as close to in the center as possible, but failed, uh, so I may have to change it. The hook reuses this sleeve component from my old extruder. Uh, in this one, the screw that holds it down sits and allows it to rotate up about its axis. As it worked with the old extruder, I'm just reusing it. I'm not 100% sure if the spring will stay on, there's a bow in this direction, right now it just rests on this bolt, uh, I want to change it uh, but I haven't decided on how yet, so it will just stay a, a screw or a bolt for now and it, and it seems to be holding, at least for now. This is then the first test assembly of my extruder. Amazingly everything sort of fit. I didn't have to file or modify any components except the remachining of this part. Um, but I think now it's at a stage where it's complete enough to be to be tested to see if there are any major flaws when actually extruding material. As said, there are still some things missing, like a filament guide, a proper spring tension mount, and also the provision for a distance sensor. But I think it's far enough so I can do some testing and make sure that I have good filament extrusion and also enough heat dissipation. Afterwards, the real fine tuning of the design can begin, and I've already made a couple of changes to the heatsink file in case I need to machine another one. This is now my testing setup. I have my new control board. Uh, being powered again by a lab bench power supply and have only the necessary connections for to run the extruder as I'm still getting to know the board and the controls. For the first test I want to sort of heat soak the extruder and cooling section so I will turn it up to somewhere around 200 degrees and then measure the temperature of the of the heat sink for uh, maybe like 15-20 minutes. I've connected a, a thermometer. One probe is right at the bottom of the heatsink here, and the second one is on the back side, right next to the uh, stepper motor. For testing, I will turn on the fan to 100% and set the extruder target temperature to 200 degrees. It has been almost a minute and now the extruder is at 200 degrees. I haven't tuned any of the PID values yet, so this may be faster in the future. And now I think I will just let it run for a bit. The outside of the heater core is now at over 100 degrees, and I haven't seen any changes. It has been over 5 minutes now, and I haven't seen any changes in the heat seek temperature. I mean, it is really cold. Uh, only 13 degrees, so if I run it somewhere with 10 degrees there may be any changes, but um, as it's not going any direction, I don't think it's it's really heating up. I've now added a filament and I will begin extruding some material. It doesn't seem like that the gears are gripping at all, so I probably have to increase the tension.
so in the end it wasn't the spring but rather the filament catching on the end of the nozzle and was just stuck there. I did add a sleeve to bridge the gap between the end of the nozzle and the extruder gears but it looks like there's still a bit of a gap where the filament can get caught on. I think I will have to see how it behaves when running an actual print, but for now it works well enough for me to go ahead. Running the extruder now within the Core XY stage frame, I can see that it fits rather well. This is also because most of the components are below the XY movement and they don't seem to catch anywhere. With the new control board, I'm the V2 and the CV2 control module, I can also implement the Core XY movement and see how it really behaves. As said, I will have to see how the extruder behaves when actually printing a part. And it seems like that I have over-designed the whole heatsink component a bit while not having enough mechanical advantage or spring tension to really press the gears together. I am however really happy how the project is coming along and the looks of the new extruder. I think it was worth spending the time and effort to designing a custom setup which now fits well within the rest of the machine. Next then is the Z-axis and all the electronics, which I will do over the next couple of weeks and also document. See you in the next one.